The makers of Campbell Soup present the Campbell Playhouse. Orson Welles, producer. Good evening, this is Orson Welles. Our story tonight is The Patriot by Pearl Buck. It is the Campbell Playhouse selection as the best new book for April, chosen from the publisher's large spring list. This book's enormously successful books on the Orient, starting with A Good Earth, have created a new conception of the Chinese peasant in the West and have brought her, among other tributes, that rare honor, the Nobel Prize for Literature. In her newest book, Miss Buck writes of the emergence of China as a nation. She also has a great deal to say about Japan. In The Patriot, she treats of the peoples of both countries, not only in relation to their present battle over the ownership of China, but in the gentler perspectives of their mutual arts and virtues. This evening, we are fortunate in having Miss Buck here in the studio with us. She has graciously consented to speak to you before the end of this program. And also with us tonight is Anna Mae Wong, the beautiful Chinese-American star whom you've all seen on the screen. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we present The Patriot, a story of the coming alive of the new China and of the people of the Orient who are solving the bitter problems of human relationships in times of stress. My name is Ai Wan. My father is the great Shanghai banker, Wu. I'm the youngest of his two sons. But when I was going to university, I learned of the suffering and privations of my people in China, and I became a revolutionist. It was En Lan, a young student who converted me and first told me of the brotherhood of young Chinese who were organizing secretly in the schools and in the mills and indeed everywhere in China, arming the poor, teaching them, and preparing them for the new order of life which was to be. Each day when school was over, we met with the others in secret, in a deserted classroom. Come soon now, comrade. The things we have hoped for. Every day, the new government at Hankow is growing stronger. When the time comes, he will sweep down the Yangtze River. One man. A great man. He? Who is he? Who is it that will come? Who is this great man? Chiang Kai-shek. Chiang Kai-shek. Chiang Kai-shek. When that time comes, comrades, we must be ready. What does it mean to be ready? To be ready means preparing the people, their minds and their bodies, preparing them for the day of their liberation. My father's house was in the European quarter in Shanghai. It was a great square brick mansion built in the French style by a French architect 40 years before. It was not in the least Chinese, but like a wealthy house in Paris with foreign furniture and the huge rooms and thick carpets on the floor. Uh, my son? Yes, father? Come here. You look tired, I want. I am tired, mother. You are late, I want. We had a meeting after school. What are these meetings, my son? Should the son of Wu the banker attend them? Student meetings, father. Then get yourself entangled, I want. Young students can do nothing to change those in control. But those in control can cut off your head. Besides, none of you understand that all... All that is involved in running a country. Yes, Father. I also, at 20, had certain foolish ideas. Yes, sir. I want you to be careful. Remember, you are the son of Wu. Yes, Father. Mm, good night, my son. Good night. Where are you going, I want? To my room to study. Good night, I want. Good night, Mother. I went up the wide carpeted stairs, and when I got to my room, there was Peony. Peony, the servant girl, unrolling the quilts and bringing in hot tea to set beside my bed. Peony. Peony, I want to tell you something. Yes? What is it? Peony, have you ever heard of the revolution? Of course I have. It's not a good thing. I've heard your father talk about it. He said revolutionists are like bandits. Oh, no, they're not. How do you know? Because I... Because I am one of them. I won. If your father knew. I feel as if you've put your life into my hands. I won. What is this revolution? When is it all to happen? Soon. 
as soon as Chiang Kai-shek comes. I don't believe it. You don't believe? Penny, I tell you, it's true. Oh, don't be silly. I wish I hadn't told you. I wish you hadn't. Except that it helps me to understand something. What? It helps me to understand you and why your heart is not to be touched. I won. You are like a young priest. Now, M. Man, the young leader of our movement, learned from me that I had confided our secret to Peony, and he was very angry. He told me I had no business to speak of these matters to a woman and a slave. He said he must go to see her, and that Peony must be threatened into silence. And so it was that he came to see her at my house. This is my room, M. Man. What is this on the floor? That's a carpet. Am I to step on it? It's foolish, but so you can if I had it, I'd sleep under it. Now, the door is shut. Here we're free. You can say anything you like. And Peony will bring us tea in a little while. Is that your bed? Yes. I never saw such a bed. I never saw anything like this. All that silk. What is it for? The curtains. I, I can't help it. I was born into this house. I don't know anything else. Oh, I'm not blaming you, Iwan. I'm asking myself. If I had been born into this, would I ever have run away and joined with the revolutionists? I don't know. Do you like it here, Anman? I don't know. It's beautiful, but I don't know. What would I do here? This soft thing under my feet all the time. I like to take off my coat and spit on the floor. No, I... I'm glad I was born as I was. Who's that? Oh, Peony. You're home early, I won. I thought you and your friend might like these. Pork dumplings and rice cakes. Thank you, Peony. Anman, this is Peony. Please do not rise. I'm not one of the family. I'm only a servant. And I'm only a peasant's son. I've never been in a house like this before. So you're in line. I know why you came here today. You were afraid I might tell your secret. That Ewan is a revolutionist. Don't worry. Who should I tell? I didn't know you, Peony. Now that I've seen you, I'm not afraid anymore. Now, why don't you two eat while the dishes are hot? Why not the three of us? Oh, I'm not... you. Used to ser- Oh, I'm used to serving, not sitting down with the others. In the revolution, there's no such thing as one to be served and the other to sit. Hey, I won. I won't sit down unless we sit down together and I'm as hungry as a starved dog. Tell me, Enlan. Enlan, oh, tell me more yeah. about this revolution. Nothing could stop it. Nothing could stop the marching of that triumphant figure of Chiang Kai-shek. He'd left Hankow and was proceeding down the river with his great army, Kyukyang, Anking, Wu. The cities on its bank fell like fruits into his hands. Shanghai grew hot with expectation and fear. It was like the coming of a storm. There was the disturbance among the peoples, like the first rufflings of the wind over the country and sea. And then there was the intense, waiting stillness. But I never could be quite sure how Peony felt. And one day I asked her outright. She'd come into the garden where everything was breaking into bud. I'd gone to look at a hawthorn flowering. Are you a real revolutionist, Peony? I don't know. I shall wait and see how it is. No, but what do you believe, Peony? You must believe in right or wrong. I'm not a priest like you. You believe in Chiang Kai-shek as though he were God. I know he's only a man. No, I don't. I don't believe in any gods, but... I believe in the revolution. The revolution is only what people do. If they do well, then I am one of them. I knew she was wrong. It was wrong to measure one's belief by what people did. The thing was right or wrong in itself, but I could not forget what she had said. And that night before I slept, I locked my door and from a secret place in my desk, I drew out a picture I'd cut from a magazine, a picture of the young Chiang Kai-shek. I sat looking at it. It was a face at once bold and kind, harsh and dreaming. I don't worship him, I thought. But I believe in him. I won. Huh? I won. Huh? Get up. Get into your clothes. What's the What's the matter? Still dark, stupid, foolish boy, wicked, deceitful boy. It is a paper. Hmm? Hundreds of names on it. Do you know what this is? It's a, it's a list. A list of revolutionists. Your name is on the list. At any moment, soldiers will be here to seize you. Chiang Kai-shek has come. Chiang Kai-shek. 
But, Father, that means... You said Chiang Kai-shek is here. He's here in the city. He came straight to Shanghai. Father, you... You don't know what that means. I saw him yesterday. He met with us, with all the bankers. We told him Shanghai must not be disturbed. Our businesses, if he wants money, that is, to go on with his government. Will you dress yourself, I want? Or do you want to be killed? Father, Chiang Kai-shek... He never agreed. Of course he agreed. The man is no fool. Everything is arranged. First he will purge the city of revolutionists. Then he's betrayed us. Chiang Kai-shek has betrayed us, all of us who believed in him. I must go to the others. I must tell them. I won't. You are going nowhere except to the docks to a ship for Japan. The car is waiting, ready. No, I won't go. Father, I can't go. I must warn the you others. You are going at once. I gave my personal word. If they erased your name from the list, you would leave the country today. Oh, you don't understand. You're making me into a traitor. You are already a traitor. The government has condemned all revolutionists to death. They have thousands of names that... I won. I won. What's the matter? Peony! Peony, come here! The young master is sick! Peony! She's gone, young master. We've looked for her everywhere. Gone? Gone where? Peony! 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 I lay on deck. The ship was moving slowly among small green islands. In the east, I could see flights of Japanese fishing vessels. Their sails white against the blue sky. That was the only way to endure my complete helplessness, not to think, not to remember. If only I could have warned Enlan. He was perhaps dead already, shot against a wall, and Peony. Peony was gone. I closed my eyes. Let nights drift over me and days pass me by. The fourth day we landed at Nagasaki. We won! We won! Are you Wu Yiwan? Yes, if you please. I am that humble one. We have been expecting you. I am Mr. Muraki's son. My name is Bunji. My father invites you to our house. We drove out through the narrow streets. And up a hill away from the town, we stopped before a thatched roof gate. Brick wall. Tiny red varnished footbridge. Over a stream. A garden. Everything in this garden perfect. There's not a leaf on the grass. Not a rock out of place in the stream tinkling and little artificial waterfalls. This is where we live. My father's garden is quite famous in Japan. And uh, there is my father now. He is retired. He is growing old. All day he is in his garden. Father? Bunji, you are here? Father, this is our guest. In this house, I won. The son of my old friend, Wu, is welcome beyond any other. It's very kind of you to accept me, sir. I do not deserve it. Your father is my friend, and all we have is yours. You're too good, Mr. Muraki. And you are lucky I won. The cherry trees are about to bloom. You have come at just a good moment. In six days, all Japan will be in blossom. Here is your room. See, I won. It opens on the garden. And when you are ready to sleep, clap your hands, and a maid servant will spread your quilts on the mat. <laughs> and no one will come here except the gardeners. It is quite your own. When Bunji had gone, I sat down and looked about me. The house was still. I felt wrapped about in peace. Life here was planned. There were lightness and clarity and absolute cleanliness, and in spite of fragility, a feeling of long-settled stability and a sense that life had been lived here, precisely like this, unchanged for generations. For the midday meal, we sat upon silvery mats about a low table facing the garden, Mr. and Mrs. Muraki Bunji and I. The air was cool and fresh. A rosy young girl came in with a tray of bowls. No one spoke to her. She set a bowl in front of each of us and went away. <laughs> uh, that was my sister. She is shy and she will not eat with us today because you are a stranger. But she will get over it. Shall I speak to your sister? Is it your custom? Oh. <laughs> my mother says wait until afterwards. She will come in again. Her name is Tama. What do you thank you? My mother says she is sorry she cannot speak in your language. She asks if you have enjoyed our poor food. Oh, I like everything. I, everything here. I won. Yes, Mr. Morgan. Your father has written me that he wishes you to learn our business. 
In the morning, you will have a place beside Bunji in the office. Bunji will help you. In the afternoon, you may study or play. If you are not happy, you will tell me. Oh, but I'm sure I shall be happy, sir. I like all my house to be happy. Now, if you will forgive us who I won, my wife and I, at this hour, every day, our gardener is waiting for us. There are things to decide. Those irises, they must be trimmed. Yes, now you will see. Tama will come in. I know my sister. Uh, how shall you behave to her, I won? Like a modern young man. What was she like? Oh, no, I won't tell you. You shall judge for yourself. Here she comes. Bundy, please. This is my sister, Tama. And this Tama is Wui Wan, our guest, who has come to live with us. We shake hands, yes, Wui Wan? Yes. Bunji told me you were a modern young man, yes? I also like to be new, though my father does not wish it. Please sit down. Thank you. What were you saying, Bunji, when I came in? Seemed to me you two had a secret between you. Oh, you see how she is, I won? <laughs> you must understand, she is two girls, Tama is. Before our parents, she is very proper and so shy. Oh, and mustn't. the other Tama is a modern girl, bold and brazen, and liking to talk to young men at that university to which she goes. I'm not, I do not. Don't believe him, I want. I shall believe only what you tell me yourself. No one else. You see, I feel myself very lucky to have come to your home. I can't tell you how unhappy I was. I thought nothing... Nothing would be any good... Just this morning, I thought that. Now, just being in this house made me feel suddenly happier. We are all happier for your company, I won. Tama, is it not so? Oh, you see? Y yes, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so through two winters, I stayed on in Japan. In the spring of the second year, I noticed a change in the house. Tama, Bunji's sister, was at home more often now. All day she was about the house in her soft Japanese dress. Tama has finished at the university. Uh, she's at home now, preparing for marriage. For marriage, Bunji? Is Tama going to be married? Oh, nothing is decided. Then Tama is to be married? Of course, uh, but not for some is time. She... Bunji, is she engaged? Oh, that is not my affair. I I'll tell you this, though, I won. My father wants her to marry General Sick. General Sick? seen him. He's an old man, as fat as a bullfrog. General Seki is my father's friend, a oh, great patriot and a samurai. He wants a healthy young wife who will give him sons, and my father says it will help the country. O old Seki's blood and Tama's health. Well, I don't think young girls should marry old fat men. How could she love him? Oh, don't think about such things. It does no good. Love isn't important. I'm not thinking of love. I'm thinking of Tama. And that day for the first time, I thought, what if they were the same thing, love and Tama? For two years, I'd been living in the same house with her. And in all that time, we'd never once spoken to each other alone. Always when we were together, there was someone else present, a maid servant or a gardener or Mrs. Moraki herself. And then, one summer's day at the office, Bunji looked up suddenly from his desk and laughed. I want to climb a mountain. A mountain? When? Why, <laughs> tomorrow. Why not? We've not had a holiday since the New Year. If you say so. And we will take Tama with us, shall we? Uh, she used to go with me always before you came. Will she come? I don't know, I won. It depends on whether she thinks it worthwhile. Uh, that is, worthwhile to stand the storm afterwards. You mean my father? No. Well, I I'll ask her anyway. She can do as she likes. Besides, it may rain in the night, and then we will none of us go. <laughs> well, why do you laugh? Oh, for nothing. I don't like General Seki either. That's why. It was clear moonlight that night when I saw her early in the morning. I felt that all the time I'd known it would be fine and that she'd come. She was wearing a cotton dress flowered in blue and white like a peasant girl's. We started soon after dawn, like any two brothers and a sister. Hey, Bunji! Bunji! I'll meet you at the stream where it is deep. We'll meet you there. Come on. Come on. Have you ever seen such a day? There's not been such a day since I came to Japan. There are not many such days, even in Japan. No, I think in the whole world. Oh, it's beyond anything I've ever known. Tama, I want to tell you, I've been, I've been trying to tell you. Yes? You mustn't marry an old man. Tama, don't, I beg you. Do you not think I shall marry whom I please? Look. There's Bunji, far up on the rocks already. 
how slow we are. Boonji! Boonji! We were all day in the mountains. We swam, we ran in the hills, we were very hungry. We ate, we laughed, and finally, we started down again towards home. It was getting dark. Come on. Yes, I won. Have you liked this day? Yes. It's been the best day of my life. And you? I don't know what this day has been in my life. But it has not been like any other day. It rained in the night. I heard the drops pattering on the roof in the darkness, and I thought, she hears it too. When I woke... The tiny garden of my room was green and dripping with freshness. And I thought, she sees it too. When I came home from the office the next day, Mr. Muraki was waiting for me. I won. Yes, Mr. Muraki. I've had a letter today from your father, I won. He's pleased with your progress. I told him you were doing well. Yes, sir. Your father writes me that there is great improvement in China. Order is quite restored. Order will always prevail. That is what the young must learn. Not desire, not willfulness, not impetuous wishes for, for anything. Mr. Muraki. I have decided to send you to Yokohama to help in our offices there. I have arranged that you will live there in the hostel where the other young clerks live. Yes, sir. Since I always do at once what I have decided upon at length, you will leave tomorrow. So, that is all. Good night, sir. Good night. Tama? 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 Tama! Who is it? I won't come in, Tama. I'll stay here. But come to the edge of the garden close to me so we can talk a little. Please. I'm going away tomorrow. I'm afraid someone will see you. Wait, I'll blow out the candle. I wonder if anyone hears that something terrible would happen. Tama. General Seiki, you wouldn't... You wouldn't ever marry him, would you? Never. Tama. I had to see you. I'm being sent to Yokohama tomorrow. Tomorrow, Tama. I don't know when I'll come back. Please, help me. What shall we do? Help you, I want. I don't understand. Tama, don't speak to me like that, like a, like a stranger. Didn't we have a good time on the hills? That was only yesterday. Yes. Yes, we did. Tama, don't marry anybody. I don't want to marry anybody. Look, Tama, that mist, it's like a curtain to hide us. Good spirits ended. I told you I believed in spirits. Fate. We can't hurry fate. We can't avoid it. Do you believe, Tommy, in two people born to marry? Yes. Now you must go. I will write to you as soon as you tell me where. And we will meet again. If it is our fate. It is our fate. listening to the Campbell Playhouse selection of the best new book for April, The Patriot, by Pearl S. Buck. That year in Yokohama was the longest of my life. There were no quiet gardens there, no screen-shadowed houses, and in the office I was surrounded by strangers now. I wrote to Tama, and one night when I came home to my room, there was a letter from her awaiting me. Wait, she said. We must wait. I know how to delay when I do not like. I have delayed this many times, and I will again and again until it will be made clear to us what our fate is. And later, as the months went by, other letters came. 
They were short, but they carried always the same steady words. I will delay. It will be made clear to us what our fate is. And then, finally, it came. Her last letter. I won. I won. I said to you I wanted to marry no one, but my father has told me there is going to be war with China. Bungie has been called headquarters, and so everything has changed. In war, Japanese men fight and Japanese women bear sons. I must marry the general. Even my mother says that if there is a war, it is my duty to fight for our country. I see my duty. It is my fate. Tama. So now I went to an old professional matchmaker. For a fee, the man agreed to go to Mr. Muraki and put forth my request for Tama's hand, according to custom. On the 18th day of the next month, he returned. Where have you been? Did not hear from you. I've been at my business. At my business. There's been a good deal of it. There was the old suitor, the general. He had to be arranged. Uh, But the young woman managed that very well. Hmm. How? Oh, by saying she would kill herself. Yes, and she went at once to it. I saw her. She said it, and then she took a knife and drew it across her wrist before our eyes, across one wrist. Then she prepared to do it to the other. True. And the mother wept and fainted, and her father bade her wait, and she stood the blood rushing out of her arm and soaking into the mat. And finally her mother came to herself and moaning something about her having no children left. I, I, I thought you said there was son. One, the youngest daughter had gone to China in the army. Oh, so? Well, uh, then the father said, wait, we'll talk it over. So I waited, and by arranging another young girl for the old tutor, which I did, it all went together, one thing and another, and... Uh, Well, I've arranged things uh, as you could wish them. The wedding day will be set soon as the custom is, and the thing is as good as done. Terrific. Oh, it was bad, it was bad, and yet I think she knew that only shedding her own blood would make them yield. The old man had been stubborn until then, but when she did that, he saw that she was more stubborn than he. Well, (laughs) now that it is as good as done, I, I will advise you. Hasten to make her way yours before she knows it. For when a woman is stubborn, the ocean itself is not so sure as her own will. My son, it is with happiness that I learn of your betrothal to the daughter of my good friend, Muraki. I am happy for you. There are no better trained women in the world than the Japanese. You will have a good family life. When a little more time has passed, bring her to China to see. But not yet. The people here have a hatred against the Japanese because of the recent troubles. The Manchurian situation will be adjusted reasonably in the end. Nevertheless, wait a little while before bringing a Japanese wife home to China. Come on. Come on, my little wife. What are you thinking about? Oh, I'm thinking of our house. I'm thinking of how I shall arrange everything. I wish we need never go down from this mountain. It's been so safe and so quiet. We've been alone together here so there were no one else in the world. Tama. Yes? Let me see your wrist. Do Japanese girls often cut their wrists to get their own way? It was what my father understood best. When I did that, he knew I meant what I said, that I would marry you. And even if there had been a war, you would have married me. I know you would. No, I wouldn't, I won. If there had been a war, I would have married General Seki. Don't you know I said I would? He's a very great general. The emperor trusts him. But somehow you must love only me. I do love only you. I shall always love you. Then why do you say if there had been a war? That would have been, had nothing to do with my loving you. I want, don't you see? As a Japanese, if it's my duty... Oh, Tama. I am your duty. I. I. You have no other. The days ran after each other so quickly that before I could lay hold of one to treasure it, another had come. Day followed day, months slipped into months, and we wanted no change. It was autumn so quickly that I could not believe it. 
One morning when we arose, we saw that there had been frost in the night. And when I got home the next evening, I found Tama sitting on the bamboo bench outside our room, looking out over the sea. You don't mind, do you, I want if I don't get up? I'm tired from sweeping the leaves from the lawn. Are you well? Very well. What are you staring at over there in the ocean? I wish I knew your parents, I won. I wish I knew what your family is and how your home looks over there. Why do you want to know them? Because I'm about to become one of them. One of your family. Until now, I want... I've belonged only to you. I've been a part of you. But now I'm going to have a child. To us, that means that I shall belong altogether to your family. And no more to my own. It was a boy. And in the spring of the next year, our second son was born. And after that, things went on as before, only... Not quite as before. Something was happening across the sea in China which could not quite be shut out. It was not a war. The papers made that clear. It was not to be called a war. It was, in the emperor's name, nothing but an incident. And then one afternoon, quite suddenly, there was news, real news. Every paper printed it. Special editions, the boys screaming in the streets, great black letters, ghastly drive on the headlines. 300 Japanese killed, men, women, and children. 300 Japanese murdered. 300 peaceful Japanese in a little town near Peking, murdered by Chinese soldiers. I won. Why did they do this? There must be a reason. The Japanese must have done something, something terrible to make them so angry. Tama. Yes, I won. Tama. I must feel that you think there may have been some cause, some reason. What does it matter what I think when I'm your wife? Don't be a a Japanese woman. But I am a Japanese woman. You've already made up your mind, haven't you? Believe that my people could simply massacre like savages without any reason. If you think that, you have no understanding of me. We've suffered for years while you Japanese have been stealing our land and trade. We've we've laid ourselves back for years. Yes, and who killed Japanese in Nanjing on March 27th and 1927? Tama! And who killed Japanese in Shanghai in 1932? Tama! It's true. We've all read it in our Japanese papers. You've held this all these years against me? No. Against your people. But I am my people. To you. And am I to you, one of these Japanese who should be killed? Oh, Tama, what have we done? What have we said? All this killing and hatred has nothing to do with us. Tama! 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 Rocky Dock, we unloaded the latest shipments from China. Now there could be no doubt about it. It was loot being shipped to the Moroccans. The merchandise, for the most part, hadn't even been packed, piled into the holes, just as they'd found it in China. Things that only a few weeks before had been in people's homes. On that day, for the first time, I knew it was a real war. They were fighting across the water, for in the hold of the ship, there was another cargo. After the freight had been landed and the unloading crew had left, I saw many small boxes begin to be brought off. Each had a name written in letters on its top. As each was brought out on shore, a name was called, and each time a little group of people came forward and received the box. All of these persons were in deepest mourning. There was no sound of loud weeping. They had been taught to smile when those they loved died in battle. But down their faces, their tears streamed. I moved back, half ashamed, and knocked against an old man standing alone. A box wrapped in his arms, as though it were his child, and looking inadvertently into his eyes, I saw there such patient sorrow... I could not but stammer something about my wonder that there was such patience and no sign of hatred. And to this the old man answered gently, Why should we hate you? You had nothing to do with this. And besides, our people are taught to suffer gladly for our country. The tears burst from his eyes as he said this, but he only clutched the box more firmly. Yes, I rejoice. I rejoice. My only son. And this old man, uttering these words, brought light to me. The dusk, the silence in which I had been living, broken, was gone. I was at that moment recalled to my old self. Yes, to that old self which had been in the days when I dreamed of my country and lived to make her what I dreamed. How these people love their country, the love of country which I saw shining in this old man's face. It was the most beautiful love in the world. How small and selfish was the love of one creature for another. This was a love infinitely larger, 
a love unto which I wanted to throw my whole self. Had I not known such love, I won you are like a priest, Peony had said to me. I longed suddenly to lose myself and all my doubts in great sacrifice. I'd never been so happy, I now thought, as I had been in those old days with Enlan. No, not even with Tama and with all her ministering to me. I am one who is happiest when I minister. This is my nature, only I hadn't known it. It had taken the suffering of other people to show it to me. And in my own country, how many suffered now? I turned. The old man went away. But I did not need him anymore. He'd done his work. Fate, that strange fate in which Tama always believed, had used him for the necessary moment. And then had dismissed him. Without thinking of them again, I went back to the goods in the customs house. But all the time, while I listened to the demands of the customs officers... While I watched clerks open the crates and while I checked one paper after another, my mind and my heart were asking, how shall I tell Tama? And at first, on my way home, I thought I'd simply go without telling her. I'd write her all down in a letter. I'd almost persuaded myself to this when I stepped into our house. Usually she was there waiting for me in the garden or at the door. But tonight she was delayed. I was already inside taking off my shoes when she came running out of the kitchen, pushing her hair back as she came. Oh, I'm so late. Well, I was making something you like, and it took me such a long time. Tama, I must go home. I am needed there. I said it very quietly so that it would not startle her, but her body grew stiff and still under my arms. The blood fled from her face. She did not say, let me go too. She knew now that I meant I must go alone. Yes, I want to. I've been miserable all these days. I haven't known what to do. I knew what you were thinking. But you didn't tell me. I thought you didn't know. I was so afraid you might think it your duty to leave us. I didn't know what I ought to do until tonight. An old man holding a little box of ashes made me see how sweet and right it is to die for one's country. Of course, you must go if your country needs you. As a Japanese, I understand that. You know, I am the same to you. Oh, yes, I know. This has nothing to do with us. We'll have to plan. Do you need a new bag, or is the one we have good enough? I shall take very little. I'll be wearing a uniform in a few days. What do you think you and the children had better do? We can always return to my own father's house. He is so fond of the children. Yes. Yes, that's probably the best thing. You'll help the children to remember me. Shall I be an undutiful wife because Miss Fortune has caught us? Am I to blame you? You are not forsaking me. I shall tell them, honor your brave father who fights for his country. I want... May we spend a little money and have a big picture of you? I'll put it where the children will see it every day. We'll keep flowers by it. We'll do it tomorrow. There's a boat in four days. That'll give us time for everything. Let's tell your father. No. Let's tell no one. I want those four days as though you weren't going. After you have gone, I'll go and tell him. But it might seem ungrateful of me, Tom. No, no, I'll tell him. Let me have my way. You will understand. One thing you will always understand is what you do now. Any Japanese would understand it. Then it was the last day. I felt her as I had felt her all those last days as close to me as my own body. I knew continually what she thought and what she wanted and how near she was at every moment to weeping, but I knew that she had set for herself the goal of not weeping until I had gone. She would smile at me while I was there and until I could see her face no more. We'd gone through the hours so close together, and yet we had not touched more than each the other's hand. And so it came to the last moment of all. In the harbor, the ship's funnels were beginning to smoke as the engines were being fired. The ship was to sail at noon. We went together hand in hand to the garden where our little boys played. They were making a dam of small stones across the narrow brook, and they did not look up, but I could hear their voices. And then, for one moment, I felt that I could not do what I had planned. You must go now. I shall send for you and the children. 
As soon as I can do it, you shall all come. When shall we be wanted? Her words, her voice, her quiet, fatal eyes recalled me and swept me out of this moment again into the vaster hour where our individual lives were now lost. I seized her in my arms and pressed my cheek against hers. I looked at her once, and in her face I saw eternity between us. I stepped upon a ship's deck, and at the same moment the gangplank began to move upward. I stood on the deck. I looked out across the water to the hills. Now the ship was moving steadily away from the dock. In a few moments, we'd be leaving the harbor. I searched the slope of the hill nearest the sea. Yes, there it was, our little house and the square of green, softer than the surrounding green. That was the garden. And now I could see the spot of color that was Tamar. I could not see her face. And yet I could feel her eyes straining to see me. A tiny spot of bright orange moved across the green to stand beside it. That was my son. And then suddenly, if I could have done it, I would have leapt into the sea and rushed back to her. Hello. 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 I'm in the laundry business in Seattle. I guess I'm your cabin mate. I'm Cantonese. The name's Lim. Jackie Lim. In USA, though, three generations. Though my old granddad went back to Canton when he was 60. I can't speak my own language, but I figure I can get and fight without talking. I'm going to fight the Japanese. So am I. My ship steamed up the river. I could see smoke rising from the city of Shanghai and buildings with great gaps in their walls. I went to our old house. My father looked old and tired. I won. Yes, father. You say that you have come home to fight for your country. Yes. There are other services than fighting, I won. Yesterday I spoke with the generalissimo, Chiang Kai-shek. I told him my son was returning to fight for China. He wishes to use you. Chiang Kai-shek? Ten years ago, he would have had me shot, me and my friends. Tell me, Father, did any escape? Yes, some escaped. They got away into the interior. Now they have a great army there. It is to them he wishes to send you. When I told him that the son of Wu was ready to fight for China, he gave me these orders for you. Orders? Today, everyone takes orders from Chiang Kai-shek. Gladly. He is a great man. The only man who will save us now from the Japanese. I believe what you tell me, Father. He has arranged everything. There is a plane waiting for you at the airport outside the city. Well, I won't. Yes, Father. I'm going. Ten years lay between us. Ten years of time and all else. But I recognized him at once. It was Enlan. Enlan, now the leader of the great army of the North. And that night, after I'd given him the Generalissimo's message, Enlan told me what had happened, told me how that morning, ten years before... The morning Chiang Kai-shek came to Shanghai, he and Peony, Peony, our little slave girl, had gone to the place of meeting, how they'd waited for me until the last moment, every second expecting me, and how in the end, when I'd not come, they'd fled together into the interior. They'd been married now for ten years. And that night, when I was alone with Peony, for a while, sitting before the fire, she told me of her life with Enlan. The long, hard years of wandering without a home. And I had two children. I was very ill with the loss. Now I shan't have any more. Peony. Oh, why should I not tell you? You are my brother. The first, my son, I lost by a fever. Our life is not a good life for a small child. We have been driven so much. He was five. I kept him as long as that. And then suddenly, he died in a day. We buried him on the hillside in Kiangxi. It is so far south from here. I think I shall never see his grave again. And then on the long march north, I had this other one, the little girl. I hoped the long march would be ended before she was born. But no, we kept climbing over those high mountains and down the rocky roads and over the desert. The child was born, so small and thin, and the girl. We were still marching, so what could we do with her? I gave her to a good farmer's wife and left some money for her and told her I would come back. 
That was three years ago. Sometimes I can't be sure if I remember the place or how the woman looked. Pian, did, did that man let this happen? You know him. He thinks only of the cause. Are you sorry you followed him that day? No, of course I'm not sorry. Without him, what would I have been? I followed the 8th Route Army for three months after it joined forces with the Nationalist government. Then bad news began to come through. Shanghai had fallen. Nanking was occupied by Japanese troops. The heavenly city of Suchao was no longer ours. And then one day a plane came for me. Chiang Kai-shek had ordered my return to Hankow, far in the interior. Who I want? I'm that person. General Litz, I'm always ready for you. I come. Who I want? Yes, General Chung. I won. You did your work well in the north. Taiwan, is there anything you wish for me? A few days leave to go with my father. We will visit our ancestral lands together, which we have never seen. And then? To return to my place in the army, General. Taiwan, I had planned to use you again. But you are married to a Japanese. Yes, Generalissimo. I am. How do I know that you are not a spy? There is no way for me to tell you. I have here letters written to you by your Japanese wife. There was a long silence. I stood there looking at the General Isimo and he reading my letters from Tama. They were simple letters, full of small things, such as how a certain tree had grown in the garden and how the chrysanthemums he'd planted together had bloomed again and how a storm from the sea had torn the paper in the lattice to the west and she and our oldest child had mended it and how big the boys grew and how she told them their father was a hero and that he fought for his country, which was theirs too. They were indeed nothing but the letters which any wife would write to the husband whom she loved and who was at the front in any war. Jero is beginning school. I bought him a brown cloth school bag for his books, a little uniform, and a cap such as the other children wear. But at home I teach him too. We put flowers before your picture every day. And every day I explain to them how brave you are and how beautiful a country China is and how we belong to China. Do I not belong to you and they to us? I won. Yes, Generalissimo. Will you give up your Japanese wife? At your command? No. I left my wife and children to come back and fight. I am fighting. When peace comes, I shall bring them here. My sons are Chinese, and she, their mother, is loyal to me. It will be a long time before peace comes. I know that. This city will be in ruins. This city and many other places. When peace comes, there may be no cities left. There will be the land. Yes. There will be the land. Who I won, you may go with your father. Thank you, General. And after a week's time, you will return to your place in the army. Yes, General. Here are your letters. Orderly. Sir? That map of the new road to Burma. It is here, General. The new road to Burma. I went out with those words in my ears. That was only a short while ago. Now I've heard it's almost finished. Thousands of men and women at work in it. It's a strange way to fight a war, perhaps. To make a great road westward while the enemy bombs the east. But it's our way. What if the real country my sons will know is this new inner China looking not seaward but across the mountains of Asia? Who knows? This concludes the Campbell Playhouse presentation of their best new book for April, Perlet Bucks, The Patriot, starring Orson Welles with Anna Mae Wong. And now, here is Orson Welles. It's been especially interesting to do The Patriot this week, as Miss Buck, Miss Wong, and myself have something in common in that we've all lived in China. 
Miss Buck, whose father was a missionary, has lived there most of her life. Miss Wong, as you all know, is Chinese. Although she was born in this country, she's achieved an international film and stage reputation. And as for myself, I visited China just long enough to be able to say Huang Yu Sheng, Frosted Yellow Willows, or uh, Anna May Wong. How do, you, how do you do, Miss Wong? I'm delighted to meet you. I, too, am delighted to meet you, Miss Buck. As a Chinese, I naturally have been intensely interested in your books on China. Thank you, Miss Wong. And, Mr. Wells, I would like to express to you the, the Camel Playhouse and to you my grateful appreciation for the selection of the Patriot as the best new book for April. I'm honored. We were honored. It's been a privilege to dramatize the Patriot. And now, Mrs. Buck, there are a number of things I and I'm sure our listeners would like to know about the new personal problems the situation in the East is creating. I should think the predicament of Chinese and Japanese who intermarried would be especially difficult. Is it an unusual situation? No, the story I told in the Patriot is a very common one. While I was writing this book, I was also corresponding with a Japanese woman. She told me that the Japanese wives, like Tama, remain loyal to their Chinese husbands and send them off to war with the feeling that this is duty. But then Japanese are trained to a high sense of duty. Mrs. Buck, do you think it's possible to feel sympathy for Chinese and Japanese and at the same time to understand them both? When one has had experience of many wars, one comes to see that the pattern is always the same. No matter who is the aggressor and who is attacked, both are victims and both lose in the end. You intimate in your story that China is looking westward. What does that mean? No one quite knows yet, except that it will certainly mean a China different from the one before the war. The territory which Japan holds is along the eastern seacoast. Roughly, it compares to our own original 13 colonies. It was the stronghold of modern China. In that small strip of territory were China's great modern cities, Tianjin, Shanghai, Nanking, Hankow, and Canton. Here were China's modern men and women, her modern schools and industries. But beyond Hankow is another China, a huge medieval country where people live and think as they have for many centuries. Modern life has not penetrated there. But now a tremendous westward trek has begun. Japan has taken the seacoast, provinces, and peasants, merchants, students, teachers, everybody who can move is going west. Their own Chinese ancient civilization flourishes in its purest form. In a sense, they are returning to their ancestors, and young China meets old China for the first time face to face. Each, of course, will affect the other profoundly, but how? Who can say? One's imagination quickens. All unknowingly, perhaps, China is hastening the unification of a continent. Thank you, Miss Buck, for the clarity with which you've explained the difficult situation in the Orient. And thank you, Miss Wong, for being with us tonight. In tonight's Campbell Playhouse production of The Patriot, the role of Iwan was played by Orson Welles. Miss Anna Mae Wong was peony. The part of Tama was played by Margaret Curtis and that of Wu by Ray Collins. Myron McCormick was Enlan and Elliot Reed was Bunji. The parts of the broker and Chung Kai-shek were played by Everett Sloan. Edgar Barrier played Muraki and Howard Teichman was Jack Lim. Music for the Campbell Playhouse is arranged and conducted by Bernard Herman. And now, Mr. Wells, will you tell us, please, about next week's story? Well... Next week, we'll offer one of the most famous comedies of modern manners. Noel Coward's witty essay on the ironies and absurdities of modern love. Private Lives. We're delighted to announce that Miss Gertrude Lawrence will be with us in the part she created so brilliantly in London and in New York. So until next week, until Private Lives, my sponsors, the makers of Campbell Soups, and all of us in the Campbell Playhouse remain obediently yours. <laughs> Makers of Campbell Soups join Orson Welles in inviting you to be with us at the Campbell Playhouse again next Friday evening when that great star, Miss Gertrude Lawrence, will appear with him in Noel Coward's gayest comedy, Private Lives. Meanwhile, if you have enjoyed tonight's Campbell Playhouse presentation, won't you tell your grocer so tomorrow when you order Campbell's tomato juice? This is Ernest Chappell saying thank you and good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Uh-huh.